So this is what we produced in the last tutorial in our preface. Let's start shading, lighting and rendering this in Solaris using Karma and Karma XPU. And to do that, I'll just switch my desktop here to the Solaris desktop. That'll take a while and then greet me with this. On my lowish resolution, everything is kind of cramped, but we'll make do with it. One way of looking at this, of looking at the stage context and the Solaris viewport is as kind of a modernized version of the OBJ context in which we traditionally set up lights, cameras, and not necessarily rendering, but that has been unified into the stage context here. So let's start setting this up by importing our geometry in here that we create in the OBJ context using a SOP import. And then in here, let's point this one to the SOP path we just created, which is the geo one and then the out null here. Let's accept that. And you can see already we are bringing in this geometry in here. Next, I'd like to prepare assigning materials to this geometry here, which I'll typically do using a material library. Just drop that down after the SOP import and we'll set that up in a minute. Then I typically go about lighting, in this case using a dome light, just a simple HDRI. And also with most of my production setups, I tend to get away with using an HDR and one or two area lights, but that's about it. Rarely do I light traditionally in the sense that I use a bunch of area lights or a bunch of point lights or spotlights to light my scene. So in this case, let's go easy with this by just control clicking on the environment light up here, which then attaches the dome light after our material library node. Then I'd like to add a camera to my scene, which I can do by control clicking on the camera icon, which will drop a camera into my scene just at the same position as it is in the viewport and it'll automatically lock it to the viewport. So now that I can move around the viewport and simultaneously adjust the camera's position. Finally, for rendering, I want to attach Karma render settings here, which is this node, which is used to set up our render settings in Karma. So the type of render engine, the amount of samples, the amount of bounces, etc., etc. And finally, for saving this out, I want to attach a UST render ROP. That is this one here. So that goes at the bottom most position. So this is my very simple, very straightforward tree here. Again, loading in geometry, assigning materials, lighting this, setting up a camera, and then setting up the render engine and saving out our images that have been rendered. So let's go over those individual settings in here. Let's start with the dome light and light this. And we can get an idea of how that looks in the viewport if we switch from perspective, that is Houdini GL by default, to Karma here, which will now use the Karma render settings set up in this node here, if we at least set the view flag on it. And then you can see we've got a bunch of icons here, this one representing the environment light. And I don't need that. So down here in the sidebar, I can uncheck this icon here. And I also want to uncheck if I go up here, the grid. So now I can see if I move my camera closer here, I've got at this AO-ish looking geometry. That is because we haven't assigned materials and we also haven't assigned any HDRI to our dome light. So let's start by assigning an HDRI to our dome light, clicking on the dome light icon here and then on our base properties on the texture slot, let's just click here and open up an HDR, which I previously downloaded. So let's filter this for HDRs and let's scroll down here. And by default, you can see we have show sequences as one entry checked. And as I've got multiple versions of this artist workshop HDR, Houdini views them as a sequence. And this is not what I want. I only want to load a single image. So I'll uncheck show sequence as one entry and then just select the 4K version of said HDR. And after a bit of waiting, I can see my HDR has been loaded. And also now the lighting on my geometry looks a good bit more realistic. Let's create and assign a material to this one here, which we can do in the material library here. So first I'll dive in here. And then in here, I will drop down under material X. You can see this UST material X subnet in which I'll create the material, which I'll assign to this abstract plant. So let's call this one abstract underscore plant like this. And then let's dive in here. By default, the USD material subnet has a few nodes set up for us. So for example, there's a very low level material X surface and material X displacement wide up to the surface and displacement output and also a bunch of subnet inputs. For now, I don't need most of those nodes as I'm not planning on using displacement. I'm not planning on using any inputs here and I'm not planning on using the low level material X surface. So I delete most of those nodes except for the surface and maybe the displacement output if I wanna use it later. In here, I find myself using mostly material X standard shader which is the Material X standard surface, which I'll drop down here and which you might recognize. It's got very similar settings to the principal shader or the Disney material model. So I'll wire the output into the surface output here. And then let's assign this basic material I just created to our geometry here, which we can do again on our stage context and in the material library here. And I scroll down 
I can select this certain material VOP that I just created by going to the stage context, the material library, and then selecting this abstract plan something that we just created, hitting accept, and then checking assigning this to geometry. And in here, I want to assign this to all geometry primitives. So now it's assigned to this abstract plan and every geometry that is wired in here into this material library. You can see that now we've got a bit of specular, a bit of reflection, and it's looking a bit brighter. However, I want to adjust this material so that it looks a bit more metallic, a bit like gold, goldish, maybe tarnished gold or tarnished copper. So I'll go back into my abstract plan material here and dial in my material X standard surface here. And for that, the one thing I want to dial up is the metalness thus turning this into a silverish metal. And I can dial in the color of this metal by adjusting the base color here. For example, picking out an orangish desaturated copperish color like that. And also then going into the specular and decreasing the specular roughness, making this more glossy like this. However, what I want to do is I want to blend my base color here between two colors, a more reddish pinkish and a more yellowish color, depending on the angle that the surface of my plant here is pointing towards the camera. So if it's facing the camera, I want this to be more reddish and it's facing away the camera, I want this to be more yellowish. And typically from other render engines, you would use a fall off or a Fresnel node. As Material X currently is still a bit low level, we'll have to build this ourselves. And we're gonna use a bunch of nodes here to build this Fresnel effect. The central part of this is the facing ratio node. So that's this one here, which I'll drop down. And this one calculates the facing ratio, that is how strongly a certain part of the geometry is facing the camera. And it needs two vectors as an input. One, the surface normal, and then the camera array pointing in the direction of the area of our geometry that we want to render at a certain pixel. We can get both by, on the one hand, using material X normal, which will give us the normal of the surface here. That's already set up to be an object mode. And that goes into the second normal slot here into the facing ratio. And the first one is the so-called eye ray. That means the ray sent out from the camera to render this scene. And we can import this using the material X ray import. And this is one of the quirks with Material X's current implementation in Houdini 19.5. So if you happen to have a solution to that, leave a comment. Otherwise, the issue is this. Within the Material X subnet that we call the abstract plant here, we have one advantage that using the tab menu, we are only filtering for nodes that are available within Material X. However, this filter is in some of those versions of 19.5 set up a bit too strictly. So in some versions, this filters out additional auxiliary nodes, such as the ray import. And in this version, the 19.5.3.6.8 that I'm using here, in order to get access to this node, I'll have to get up one level here, and then again, search for the ray import. And now I can see I've got the comma ray import here, which I can add here to this node. So what I'll do as a temporary workaround is just cut this node using control X, and then going back into our node network and pasting this node here. And there it is. Again, if you've got a workaround or a solution to that problem, please let me know in the comments. So in here, in the ray import, what I want to import is the direction. However, this ray, the direction, points exactly in the wrong direction. So let's invert this vector's direction by just multiplying it using a material x multiply, which will set up to have a vector signature. And also make sure that in the comma ray import, we set this type here to vector three as well. And then we wire in the ray imports output into the material input in one slot, and then make sure we multiply all the vectors components by minus one, just turning this vector's direction around. And now I can use that and wire that into the facing ratio in here. And just for checking out what this node does, let's wire this directly into the base color of our material. And we can see that if on the material, we just dial back the metalness, we can see we are getting this black to white gradient here, depending on where our geometry's surface is facing. Again, let's increase metalness. And now I want to be able to dial in colors for these facing ratios here for the fall off here, or our quote unquote fake Fresnel. I can do that by using a material X ramp node. That is the color ramp here, which takes as an input this facing ratios output. And then based on that it generates a color. In my case, I want to go from a yellow orangish color. Let's go for, I don't know, maybe something like this to more of a pinkish color, uh, maybe something like this, and then wire this ramp into our base color here. And now we can see we are getting this slight orange or yellow tint at the edges, and then massively this pinkish tint on the front faces. If I wanted to invert that, having the gold color facing towards the camera and the pinkish color facing away, it could go to the material facing ratios 
invert and invert just the mapping. However, that's not what I want. Instead, in here, I want to work on my bias here, which pushes and pulls the transition of the facing ratio towards or away from the camera. And in my case, I want to push it towards the camera quite drastically to 0.1. So only those areas facing straight towards the camera are showing this pinkish tint and only slightly. And then with the gain, you can adjust how strong the transition from one color to the next is with lower values making for a more abrupt transition and higher values smoothing it out. In my case, I'm going to stick to 0.5. Also, I want to use this facing ratio, this fake fall off or fake Brunel effect to drive my materials roughness. So again, I'm going to take this output here and remap it using a material X remap node, which as an input takes the facing ratios output. And then let's remap this input, which goes from zero to one. And let's remap it to be between zero. So zero roughness, and maybe let's use a maximum of 0.5 as a roughness, and then just wire this into our specular roughness slot here. And now we can see that all these areas facing towards the camera are a bit more dull, a bit rougher than the areas facing away from the camera. All right, back to our stage net here. And let's work on a background, just a simple quick grid with a gradient on it. So let's create a grid node here, which is just a sop create. And in there, you will find your trusty old grid node here, to which in our case, I want to attach a UV texture node. So UV texture and set this thing up to project along the Y axis here, and then maybe give this UV coordinates here a bit of a twist using this angle slider here. And I decided to turn it around. 30 degrees. All right, back on our stage, let's attach materials to this one as well, using again a material library node. And in here, again, let's create a Karma subnet, material X subnet that is, and let's call this one EG for background. Again, in here, I will delete all these nodes here and instead use a standard surface to dial in the color and appearance of my background. And for now, let's just set this one to a light blue greenish color like that. Okay, back on our stage to merge this here, our grid with its material into our scene. Let's use a merge node, which goes between the dome light and the other material library in here. So I'm just gonna use a merge wired in between here and then add the second material library in here as well. And now you can see we've added this grid here. However, it sits awkwardly in the scene. So let's move it around a bit by attaching a transform node here. And then with the node selected here, let's first delete these primitives here and set them to transform all geometry primitives. And then with this node selected, make sure you have your tool handles checked and we can move this grid around on the one hand, but also we can rotate this grid to our liking. In our case, I don't want to translate it along the Y axis, but a bit backwards, minus eight units along the Z axis. And then let's rotate it around the X axis and not along the Z axis, maybe like this. And also let's scale it up a bit, just using the uniform scale here, increasing that to 1.5 or 1.7 maybe. All right, let's finally apply our material here in the material library. Down, let's select the material VOP here, that is the material library 2's BG. And then let's assign this to the geometry and again, selecting all geometries primitives here. We can see the material has been assigned. Let's work on it a bit by diving into the material library, opening up our BG subnetwork, and then on the standard surface. The first thing I want to do is dial back my specular to zero. So no spec on here. And then I want to use the UV coordinates to create a color ramp, which I can do again using a few of the material X low level nodes. First, the material X geometry property value, which I can use to import UV coordinates. However, let's go back to the stage and have a look at this or maybe this node's output here. So let's dial down grid and click on the mesh. And over here in our scene graph details, let's drag over those names here and see which attributes we have. And you will see there is no UV attribute. And that's one of the major caveats when it comes to USD because a UV attribute has been renamed to be ST and Houdini internally automatically renames it as such. So be aware of that. UV is now called ST. So back into our material library, into our material here, and in the material X's geometry property value, let's import a vector, that is a vector two, which is called ST. And then let's separate, using a material X separate two for two channels, the X and the Y channel of these UV coordinates, or ST coordinates as they are called now. All right, so I could either use that one and pipe it directly into my base color, again, resulting in a black to white gradient, or as previously, use a material X color ramp, which goes in between here and then dial in colors to my liking. In my case, I'm gonna start with a yellowish green or a greenish yellow, maybe with a U of 50. And let's just desaturate it a bit and also make it a tiny bit darker like so. And then let's have that fade into a 
bright blue, so something around 200 maybe. And then let's set this to, I don't know, around 0.6 and also dial back the brightness a tiny bit like so. And that's all I want to do for the backdrop here. Again, you could dial in the angle in the grid notes UV texture and your color ramp in here. As a few last tweaks, I want to go back to my stage context here and in the dome light, I want to increase its intensity to say three units and also transform it a bit under the transform node. I found again through lots of trial and error that rotating this by minus 30 degrees resulted in a nice reflection that I really liked and a nice overall bright lighting here taking out a good bit of the saturation of the backdrop here and making it really bright, which I liked for this kind of look. Finally, let's go to the comma render settings in here and be brave and switch this to the XPU engine. It's still in beta, but all features that I've been using here should be supported by it now. And we can see it starts rendering and also tries to initialize three out of my four GPUs with one that fails because it's damaged currently. In here, I want to increase the resolution to 2560 by 1440. And maybe, just maybe, I think I don't need to be excessive with this here. Just increase the path tracing samples a bit. Although I think I wouldn't need them. Let's just quickly talk about some of those settings in here and down here. So for rendering under limits, you have your typical bounce limits with the diffuse limit set to one, meaning that we only have one indirect light bounce. Reflection limit set to four, refraction to four as well, and we have zero volume limits, so volume would not render correctly as well as subsurface. The color limit dictates what's the maximum brightness that our individual samples are allowed to come back and at which maximum brightness they will be clamped. In this case at 10, and if you dial that down, you can see the scene might get a a little dull, maybe in those highlight reflection areas compared to our previous default setting of 10. We can now see those really bright reflections. Under the output picture slot, we can specify a path and an output file name where to store our image or images should we decide to render. And if we are prepared for rendering, let's have a look at the USD render op, which in our case we'll use to just either render disk or let's maybe render this to mplay and then save an image out from mplay. So I'm going to click that. And after rendering this image in the background, mplay pops up showing, well, our finally rendered image. So let's save that, going to File, Save, Frame As. Again, up here I can select a folder where to save that. So let's go into Projects and our usual file and call this one Karma in 5 mins.exr. So I'm going to save an EXR here and then I'll hit save and that's been saved successfully. So now if I open up this file, you can see this does not look at all anything like what I had open in mplay. And that is because I've got OCIO and ACES enabled in Houdini. So in order for this one to display correctly, we'll have to apply the correct color settings, which in this case I'll quickly go over in DaVinci Resolve, especially in Fusion, DaVinci Resolve's compositor, which has comically large interface elements as it's set up here. <laughs> and in here, I'll add a tool that is a loader, which should load a file. And I'm gonna point that to the rendered file that I just output here. And by default, Fusion also set up a media output for the viewer here where I can see the result. And in between here, I'm gonna add another tool. Namely, it hides under color, the OCIO color space. So that goes in between here. And then I'll have to make sure to select the correct color spaces. The source space in this case should be set to ACES CG and the output space to sRGB, which hides somewhere down here, out underscore sRGB, like this. And now we've got the correct look again. And if you are struggling to find from which to which space to convert, usually there is a hint in mplay in this bar down here, which sometimes is closed. So make sure this is open here. And you can see that we are using ACES and we are displaying this as an sRGB. So that's the secret of displaying your saved Karma render output in its correct color space. So far for our very quick intro, covering importing geometry from SOPS into Solaris, working with the material library, creating materials and applying them, tweaking a few of the material attributes, namely their colors and roughness, and then setting up and rendering out an image. And if you want to learn more about Houdini, maybe a bit about Unreal or Blender, or if you plainly want to support us, consider becoming a patron of ours, as it's through the help of our patrons that we can run and tag as we do. And to everyone out there supporting us, Thanks so much. With a very special thank you going out to important looking pirates, Jellyfish Pictures, The Mill, Method Studios, Pixonic, Random42, Rodeo Effects, Side Effects, Lusion, Styleframe, and Rafikanadol Studio. Thanks so much. And as always, until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.